If you've seen some of my other Samsung A-Series videos already, you know what I'm about to say. Basically, this A34 ended up being better than its higher tire counterpart, Samsung's A54, and I don't really think it was supposed to be that way. Usually, Samsung differentiates its lesser A-Series phones by withholding certain features. A high refresh rate display, certain camera specs, charging speeds, whatever. But with the A34, not only did Samsung give this phone everything the A54 has, but they also made the mistake of trying to opt for a less powerful processor as a way to bring this phone down. Basically, they thought their own new XNS chipset in the A54 would be better than the Mediat X chip inside the A34. But that wasn't actually the case. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. And for those of you in the US, you may not have even realized the A34 exists. It's technically not a phone that's available here in the States, at least not through major carriers like the A54 is. But it's an unlocked GSM 5G phone all the same, compatible with that and T. T-Mobile and their various subsidiaries and you can easily buy it from any third-party retailer like Amazon or even QVC and HSN sell it which is a little odd. Wherever you buy it from, you shouldn't pay more than about $300 bucks for it. I've seen Amazon have it listed for under $250 bucks and that makes it at least $100 cheaper than the A54, a great deal for a Samsung smartphone in general, but especially good when you realize what you actually end up getting. So technically the A34 doesn't have asterisk everything asterisk the A54 has. Samsung still went with that dated budget phone design for this A34 where you get a teardrop shape notched for the selfie camera and bigger borders surrounding the display, but this phone actually has a larger 6.6 inch screen compared to the A54 6.4 inch screen, and its overall physical size isn't that much bigger. So the screen to body ratio, for some reason, is better on this A34. This phone does still have a My Cross card slot though, so that's nice at least. You get a minimum of 128 GB of built-in storage, which is a decent amount. But it's always nice to at least have the option of adding more. By the way, I should mention that your configuration options this year for both the A34 and A54 are exactly the same. 128 or 256 GB of storage and 6 or 8 GB of RAM. So if you're keeping tally, that's an even score there. It has an upgraded display from last year's A33. It's brighter. It's a 120 Hz refresh rate instead of 90. That's all great. But more importantly, the core specs of this display on this phone and on the A54 by extension are almost the same. What does matter is the simple fact that Samsung can't technically say that the A54 is faster or performs better than the A34. It's objectively not true, at least not always true. This is great news for the A34 because, one again it means for less money, you get as good or better of a device. In my opinion, there's never been a better time to not get a high-end Samsung smartphone. And with this A34 being so close to the A54, for the first time ever, I wouldn't even get the highest in the series phone either. And it doesn't tend with performance. My A34 lasts longer and has more juice left at the end of each day compared to the A54, usually by 10 or 15%. What do you guys think? Am I missing something? Is the A34 really that good? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course, especially if you have this phone yourself. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow 5M Tech if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!